Uh, we are not recording. Oh, we are. Yes, I just say I. I just said I started. I started speaking English so that we can record, and then I forgot to start recording. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have a round circle. We. It has a handle decomposition coming from the Morse function with two critical points, and now we cook up the decomposition of its complement by looking at what's happening near these points. So this critical point will correspond to a to an index one critical point uh, in the complement, and this should correspond to index two critical point on the complement. You can see it like as water flows up. So we have a circle, like a ring in a basin. We add water, the water raises, and once it, and it hits the critical point and then it flows above it. And then that, that that's what's happening is just closing the, closing water above the ring and then the water closes once again above the other the other part of the ring so that's the idea of the rising water principle and the, it is proved in section in the gomp Sipschitz book uh, so the idea is to give a more theoretical proof so we have um, we start with uh, an embedded Manifold M, FF is an embedded Morse function and Xi is a gradient like vector field for M. All right, so that's, uh, I think this can be now erased because it's uh, uh, not needed. So we have, uh, mm, so the aim is to construct uh, the ve vector field, a new vector field, which would be a gradient like vector field for F, but not on the whole of omega, but on omega with a neighborhood of M cut out. So what we do, we choose a smooth function that is square distance to M. So we choose a Riemannian metric as, as usual. This Riemannian metric will be assumed to be such that the, core, the Morse coordinates near each of the critical points are ortho, ortho, orthonormal, which is something that we can assume because the space of metrics is uh, convex and convex combinations of two metrics is convex so we can just choose metrics uh, uh, near different points and then glue them by a partition of unity so that's not a big not a big problem uh, so uh, we want to uh, say what well, i'd say M delta is a set of points X such that rho of X is greater equal, uh, sorry. Oh yeah, rho of X is greater or equal than delta. And uh, capital X is omega minus N delta. And this is a manifold manifold with boundary. Uh, so far so good. And now let me just use a trick that I used yesterday during my uh, Uh, during my talk, and then we we choose uh, we want to construct a vector field on the X. Can you see the both blackboards? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. So now construct. A vector field on X based on Xi. So to this end, we choose a cutoff function Phi from zero to uh, sorry from uh, mm, uh, zero infinity to. 0, 2, such that phi of 0 equal 2, phi prime is less than 
less or equal than zero, phi of one is one, phi prime of one is, uh, well, you can choose that it, choose it to be minus one, but it's definitely not zero. That's the key point. All right, and then we define the vector field xi, xi tilde, to be xi minus phi of rho of x over delta. And now it's the scalar product of xi and gradient of rho divided by gradient of rho, gradient of rho times gradient of rho. Uh, so this vector field depend, well, depended on the parameter delta from here. So here we have also parameter delta. Uh, this shouldn't have happened. Uh, the parameter delta that appears in here. So we, our function depends on um, it depends on the parameter. Uh, our xi depends on the parameter delta, uh, delta, which will be adjusted later on. And last time we proved, and I won't repeat the proof, that xi tilde is tangent to the boundary of x. Okay, so that was our last time uh, discussion. And now we start proving that xi is, uh, Mm. Start proving that Xi is uh, has critical. Uh, yeah. Can you recall what was uh, rho? Uh, rho was the the function is the square the square distance of the square distance to m. Okay, so this is function that is zero near zero at m, and it. And it grows away from from m as it's further. I will not prove that the that the level set that the level sets of rho, at least smaller small level sets like near x near m are smooth manifolds. Okay, this is a task that is usually done during uh, calcul calculus two. And uh, and I think it's the basic function theorem, uh, and that's it. Okay, so this is this is the this, this is the distance function. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks. Okay, so now yeah, let's. Could get... I ask a question? Sorry. Could I ask a question about yeah. um, for for small delta is is x something like the tubular neighborhood of? of yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, and we will adjust delta later on. Okay, so I will. So I said we choose delta, and then the, the statement will be uh, at some moment we will choose delta sufficiently small. Okay, because we we have we need to control. So if you pick delta, I can choose delta beforehand. I can create a weird uh, gradient like vector field that doesn't satisfy the statement, and everything falls apart. So delta will be very small, and that's the uh, that's the moment I will copy this. Now change the the way I work because we will ma make our hands dirty proving that the key point is that Xi study grids of Xi tilde. So first, choose. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, if you, uh, Mm. Choose a ball bi near each critical point of f on m near each critical point zi with coordinates well x one, 
xn y1 y d as in the embedded Morse lemma well such that xi is minus x1 minus x8 x8 plus 1 x uh, n sum y i square 0 0 and the coordinates x1 y d are orthonormal so this is one case so we will try to construct to study critical points of xi tilde in two ways first we are close to critical points of f on m or I, it should be three ways actually so first we are we have critical points of f on m and then this is this is like uh, working in local coordinates second we are away of critical points but still on m or near m and third we are away from uh, away from m okay so that, that there are three three cases to consider and this is the first case actually the hardest one but i will just spell out the cases and then start with the second one uh, note that these coordinates i should probably I should have drawn indices for to distinguish these coordinates in B1 and B2 and B4 and so on but uh, it's actually not needed because there is no risk of confusion so these are coordinates in near each bi we have separate set of coordinates and this h depends on uh, depends on i and there should be this is this should be, this is y j all right now, set B to be the union of the balls. Now, for each, for each W that is on M minus B, choose. Uh, so what is happening we, we have w in, in b we can choose we can choose a ball bw with coordinates x1 xn y1 yd again this set of coordinates will be the it will depend on w but these coordinates are not that special such that well and we require only one thing m restrict intersected with pw is given by the set of y1 equal y d and uh, and what and uh, also uh, mm, x1 X and Y one, Y D are uh, orthonormal. So that's is like splitting. We have a a manifold M. We split essentially the coordinates to for tangent coordinates to M and normal coordinates to M. Okay, so that's the way we. Uh, we, we we work with we can always choose such a uh, uh, such a metric and then we see that first we can de decompose xi in bw as xi x plus xi y okay so i don't know if it's clear but xi x is the part of xi in these coordinates and xi y is the part of x in these coordinates so if you are not don't feel comfortable you can write xi is union of a i d over d x i plus union b j d over d x d y j and then this is x 
psi i, psi x, this is psi y. In particular, psi x is tangent to m and psi y or parallel to m because psi itself is tangent to m, psi y vanishes on m identically, and psi y is orthogonal to m or orthogonal to parallel copies of m. Okay, is it clear? Mm. So now we have the following observation. Psi x of w, psi of w is uh, mm, equal to psi x of w because w is in m, so psi y of w is zero. Okay, this is first observation. Then psi x of w is not zero because uh, uh, psi x of w is different than is not zero because w is not a critical point. If psi x of w were zero, psi of w were zero, but then w is on m minus b. But b contains all the critical points of psi that, that are on b. So psi of x of w is not zero. So by continuity, shrinking bw if necessary, we may and will assume that psi x of w, psi x is uh, not equal to zero on the whole of uh, on the whole of the BW. Okay, so far so good. Yeah. What is W? Sorry. What is W? W is the W is the point we have chosen here. Okay. So now we. So now the idea is, uh, well, we will eventually cover M with ball, by uh, cover M by balls. Uh, and once we have covered M by, oh, by, by open, find the open cover of M, we pass to a finite subcover and we will show that the, all the critical points that can happen of psi tilde occur in case one and on case two now. They don't. But for that, we need to adjust delta and we, we are now working to adjust delta to, to our uh, uh, situation. All right, so shrinking bw if necessary, we may and we'll assume that xi, xi x is zero, but then you see uh, um, now observation gradient of rho uh, Uh, we can de decompose gradient of rho by eta x, eta y. And eta x, all right, we cannot, we, we don't control the metric. We cannot assume that the metric is like, you know, we have a flat metric. So we cannot say that uh, the gradient of rho is, uh, is just, orthogonal to uh, to the copies of M. So we cannot assume that eta x is, uh, mm, that eta x is uh, uh, mm, 
wait a second this uh, i need to to fix the logic of that mm. uh, eta x of w is zero mm. Mm. Oh, sorry, got stuck. Um. I just want to say that uh, from eta x equal uh, from from this properties we we want to argue that this vector field cannot be parallel to delta rho as long as we stay inside of uh, inside of, B, of a sufficiently small ball uh, bw but now what i'm um, so I'm saying that psi cannot be parallel to mm, to uh, delta rho, and uh, that is uh, uh, that is the statement. And now I forgot the forgot the the argument because I said it's not needed to recall because it's so trivial. Uh, let me just stop and skip that part uh, for the moment. It it will come back to later. We need to show that if pw is small then xi is not parallel to delta rho uh, Well, one of the quick argument, but it's a bit dirty, is that we can show that, and that's we can show that psi x is greater than psi, c times psi y. The norm of psi x is greater than the norm of psi y everywhere on BW, but uh, eta x is less than d eta y everywhere on, uh, everywhere on BW. So this is like an argument that we can that we can use, but it's uh, uh, it's a little bit dirty, I think. It's it's too complex. Uh, so I will I will skip that and we'll come back to that later if I recall the proper one, the proper argument. So taking this. For granted, psi tilde has no critical points on Bw. If Bw is small, but containing W. Anyway, we choose consider now B uh, of Bw union. B1 union B n. So recall that B1, Bn were from here. So these were balls near these were balls near critical points. And these are our BW. And now, well, it's always uh, my greatest pain in more series to distinguish whether we work with open or closed balls. Usually we open with we work with open balls, but we somehow tacitly assume that uh, they are they have like they've been compactified to uh, they've been close to some compact so that we can say like well we have a lower bound of the function on an open ball and etc so this is an open cover of m 
And actually, this is not just an open cover of M. So let me draw a picture. We have like M. Okay, but these are these, these are not open subset of uh, saying open cover is a bit of ab abuse of language. This is like open subset of omega that contains m. All right. So now by compactness of m, uh, not that color, uh, by There exists delta greater than zero such that the subset, let me call this set U, rho of x less than delta is contained in U. All right, if this weren't the case, we could choose well, that's an exercise in topology, okay? That if we have an open subset containing M and rho is a smooth function, then we can always, like that vanishes only on M, then we can choose, we can, inside of this ball cover, we can fit in a thickening of, of M, like a tubular neighborhood, tubular neighborhood of M can be contained in this union. All right, that answers the questions about choosing sufficiently small delta. All right, is it clear? Not very much. I think it is. Okay, Jakub says it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, so like two people say it's it's okay. It's like it's enough for me to continue. So what happens if we choose delta uh, such a small delta? Well, our vector field psi. Well, it doesn't have critical. It has well outside of you. Or I should I should have said two delta because we call our function phi was uh, uh, oh it is not written here it should be added phi of two is zero so that we have control that we if uh, if we are away from if we are further than two delta from M, we don't change the function. So we don't change the vector field. So if we don't change the vector field, then away from this open cover U, Xi tilde is equal, uh, sorry. The Xi tilde is equal to Xi. So away from this set, Xi tilde is equal to Xi, all right? So it has the same critical points, everything is fine. Inside of U, well, we know that there are no critical points of Xi tilde near these small balls BW. So the only thing that we need to control is uh, to control the critical points of xi tilde inside of these balls. All right, so then, but then inside these balls, we have local coordinates and we can work with local coordinates. And this is a bit painful, but it's not that painful unless you work with immersed theory. So if you were, want to conduct this, uh, this uh, reasoning in immersed more theory, then uh, the number of calculations uh, grows like exponentially. Mm. 
but for, for, for the embedded part, it's pretty easy. Okay, so we now are in the position to study the vector field Xi tilde in this region. So mm -hmm. again, probably I will need a big screen, bigger screen. So let me just copy that formula. Oh, I cannot do this. That's bad. All right. Uh, xi is equal minus x1 minus xh xh plus 1 xn sum yj square 0 0 and now we assume that the metric is orthonormal metric is orthonormal and this boils down to saying that rho is equal to y1 square plus yd square Okay, that's because the, the function is square distance to, uh, to the manifold M and M is given by zeros of, uh, zeros of this, uh, uh, zeros of y, one y n, so y d. So instead of like unfolding this guy, well, okay, we could do that, but let's, argue when these two vector fields are parallel. So Xi, maybe I can, oh, I will erase that. And I will say nabla rho is equal to zero, 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 two y one, 2y2 to yd. Okay, so this is like an attempt to use uh, the ampersand symbol of, of LaTeX in uh, uh, in uh, on a blackboard. It's a little bit failed. But now If Xi is parallel to Nabla rho, so that's the, that's the only chance that this the vector field Xi tilde Ven is a linear combination of this vector field and that vector field because that's a scalar. So if Xi tilde is zero, then this has to be parallel to that. So if Xi is parallel to uh, to uh, to Nabla rho, then what has ha what, what what's happening? x1 equals to xn equals zero because xi has non-zero x first x1 coordinate and xn coordinate if any of this is non-zero. So if any of this is non-zero, then this is not parallel. Then y1, y sorry, y2 equal yd equals zero. Okay, so far so good. So then the only thing that, le that is left is the only non-zero coordinate. Is uh, Y1. So Xi is zero, zero, y one square, zero, zero. Two y one, zero, zero. It's not very bad. Uh, and then uh, nabla row square is 
No, sorry. Mm, the wrong symbol. Xi nabla rho is uh, very easy to compute. It's 2y1 the cube. Nabla rho, nabla rho is. Mm -hmm. So now we want to find the conditions on y1. Okay, so that's, we know all the conditions for all the other coordinates. We want to show that there are precisely two critical points where uh, the vector field, th these vector fields are equal. So that's, uh, uh, I might have screwed, no, I shouldn't, no, no it's okay. Uh, mm. oh, and of course you can guess this because uh, this uh, parallel means, uh, uh, because if it's, if they are, if they are parallel, then uh, you can guess that this is zero. This, this has to be one, okay? Because that's the orthogonal projection of Xi tilde is an orthogonal projection of, on xi, of Xi along nabla rho. So this is zero precisely when Phi is zero. So precisely when rho is equal to one, but we can do the calculations uh, a bit more carefully. Oh. Okay, we started with, let's finish it. It's 4y1 square. So, psi nabla rho over nabla rho nabla rho is equal to, and now I will use the other, um, um, is equal to, um, y1 square times uh, d over dy1, okay? Which is a shorthand for zero. Uh, y1 square zero. So the statement that we have proved is xi tilde is zero if and only if x1, xn is zero, y2 equals yd is zero and y1 is plus or minus square root of delta. Okay, because that's if and only if rho is uh, rho is equal to delta. So I'm confused here. In in the, the, the bottom green line, you've you've taken two scalars and then you've got a vector. Well, uh, yeah, that's this. This is the this is the vec This is the vector. Yes, this is the way you can denote the vector. Left is just two numbers, right? It's just a number. Uh, number. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so this is like the. Uh, mm, 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 this oh okay I I know why we did why did we uh, do that so this is actually needed for what delta rho delta rho is equal to uh, uh, Y one over two. Okay, this will be we will need in the in the moment. Okay, so these are precisely two critical points. That's what I said. You each critical point on the manifold will correspond to precisely two critical points on the boundary. So these are boundary critical points. Okay. These are uh, these are boundary critical points. All right. So now, uh, what is the index? So let me write. Uh, mm, let me just argue. I. Mm,
the way I should say it uh, in a... Um, so let me first write something that is not precise and then so that you know what is going on and then I will try to be a bit more precise to explain all that. So not precise, not precise calculation of the index with a little bit of cheating. So I will write what is happening with Xi minus Y1 over two delta rho. But, all right, instead this y1 over two is precisely this guy. Uh, and I will say, okay, if it is, uh, uh, or, uh, or, so this is like this formula. So I will work with, I will work near the critical, near any of these two critical points, okay? So, so this is y1 over 2. Uh, and uh, I replace, uh, temporarily, I replace this guy by what I computed, but this I computed at, the, at, the criti at this critical point, okay? So this is, this is formula that holds uh, No, this formula holds actually everywhere. So that so this is not cheating, okay. So I don't need to cheat. All right, xi tilde is xi minus phi of x over delta, y1 over 2, uh, 0, 0 to y1, 2 y2, 2 yd which is equal to minus x1 minus xh xh plus 1 xn and now we have uh, some yi square minus phi y1 square And there is a uh, minus phi y1 over 2, uh, sorry, uh, y1 y2 minus phi y1 y3 minus phi y1 y d. Okay, so this is like simple calculation. I, this for, This formula is plugged in into here, and this formula holds. Uh, oh no, it doesn't hold. I was cheating. All right, sorry. So this holds everywhere, but this doesn't hold everywhere. Okay, so let's uh, let's assume that let's plug in this. Uh, it does it, this first one holds uh, and everywhere? Uh, this one yes this one, i think, yes, I think that this this fraction is holds everywhere when you compute it uh, no because this this frac this guy is the sum of squares not for y1 square yeah sum of squares but this first guy yes. is is uh, is not this uh, yeah it, okay. it is it is sum of squares times 2y1 and this uh, okay. adds to the, this, the, this fraction that you have in the first place. Oh, I so think. you say that this holds everywhere, yes? That's, that's what you're Th saying. That's what I am saying. It's... Uh, 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 let's do it. So let's do this calculation for, mm, for uh, to make things precise. Mm. Xi delta rho is equal to, the only part that is not vanishing is here, it's sum of yj square times 2y1. Nabla rho, nabla rho is equal to 4 sum of yj square. That's what Piotr said. 
and psi delta rho divided by delta rho delta rho is equal to, well, y1 over 2. Thank you. That's okay. Regardless on whether x1 equals xn equals 0 or not, y1, y2 or yn equals 0 or not. So this is a general formula. Okay. So let's look at this at this part. Well, and there are like two cases to consider. First, we have a plus sign. Y1 is positive, Y1 is negative. Phi is something that you consider, uh, phi is something that you consider to be um, close to one near the critical point. Okay, phi is something that is one. It has, it is not exactly one, but it is close to one. So y1, if y1 is positive, so if the sign is plus, then we have like this direction is the expand, is the contracting direction of the vector field. These are the expanding direction, directions. So we have like this will they will this will correspond to the stable manifold. This will correspond to the unstable manifold. This is uh, this is the term that I will that is normal to the boundary. So it will tell us whether the vector field is boundary stable or boundary unstable. And I will deal with this uh, with this part uh, uh, at the end because it's like it requires a, a different type of argument. But these parts are the parts that are somehow tangent to the boundary mm, uh, or to the sphere bundle to the boundary. But these are now contracting if y1 is positive, if y1 is positive and expanding if y1 is negative. All right, so if y1 is a positive number, if y1 is positive, so if you choose y1 to be positive, then these are, these are, then y2, uh, these are coordinates on the stable manifold. If y1 is positive, so at the positive, so the coordinates y2 up to yd contribute to the stable manifold. And if I want uh, up to um, uh, if I one uh, is negative, otherwise to the unstable. Uh, so uh, this is uh, mm, so this will correspond to different indices of the critical point. So that's I'm saying I'm saying it in a, like informal way because it's informal. If you want to be formal, you can compute the derivative. So what is what is the way of we have a vector field? What is the the way of um, introducing the um, um, uh, of what is the way of uh, um, um, sorry? I would say what is the um, uh, what is the way of computing the index? Well, you compute the derivative, you linearize the vector field. So you comp compute the matrix of the linear linearization the matrix of xi tilde, and then you look at the, this should be a, um, and then you look at the, uh, at the number of negative eigenvalues. Okay, this is the, this is the, this is the index because that's the dimension of the stable manifold. That's uh, 
essentially the grobmar hartmann or hadamard perron theorem, which I never remember which one is which. Uh, so if you want to be extremely rigorous, you need to compute the linearization. But the idea is that you look at this, um, but this is basically what we do. We just don't call it linearization, don't, don't, don't call it, because, it's, uh, because the linearization will be diagonal. Uh, these are expanding directions if uh, y1 is negative, so at the negative double point, and, positive and uh, contracting directions if otherwise. All right, so is it more or less clear? I think it is. All right, so now let's try to see what happened, what is happening with this coordinate. So consider the d of dy1 coordinate. We have sum of yi square minus phi y1 square. And restrict to the line x1 equal xn equal y2 equal yd equal 0. So we have like our manifold M. And we have the we have this line. So we want to see whether it's there is expansion or contraction on this line. So what is the sign of this expression on this line? All right, so for that, we know that, what we know? Uh, we know that phi is less than one over here and over here, and phi is greater than one in here. Okay, that was our definition of phi. You see, we had this uh, weird property that phi prime is less than zero and phi one is not zero near, uh, uh, is not zero at uh, at the point one, if you look carefully at the condition that it that the, the, the derivative is non-zero, this will tell us that the linearization matrix of psi tilde at the crit at these two critical points is non-degenerate in the y one direction. Otherwise, it would be degenerate. But uh, I will not, uh, you know, I will not do all the computations for that. But this is being less or equal than zero means that. Definitely phi is smaller than one here and greater than one here. So what does this mean? This means that, well, this expression over here is negative and it is negative also over here. Uh, sorry, uh, um, the opposite. Uh, here it is, here it is positive because this one is smaller than that. And here is also positive because this is smaller than that. So you see these are squares, so it doesn't matter whether y1 is positive or y1 is negative. But then, the flow on this line, this line is preserved by the flow. The flow on this line is in this direction and in that direction. Okay, so we have expansion in this direction and contraction in this direction. So remember from this um, uh, from this from this part that we have. Here we have 
contractions in the normal directions, here we have expansions. So we can sum up our discussion to see uh, that um, if P plus minus is the point zero, zero square root of delta plus minus zero, zero, then index of P plus is equal to the index of P plus D minus one. This D minus one are the direct, are the number, is the count of the discord of this, uh, of these coordinates. So it is the count of these contributions. All right. And from this picture, we see that P1, P plus is boundary unstable. Unstable. Index of P minus, well, is equal to index of P plus one. And the plus one comes from this coordinate because these Y coordinates are expanding. And P minus is boundary stable. So this will tell us that when we cross the critical points, we will change the topology twice. First, we change the top, but we change the topology of the manifold and the boundary twice, first at P minus and P plus, but the complement, so the, the change of the topology of X is only due to boundary unstable critical points, so due to these points. These points do not contribute at all. Okay, so this is like the end of like a sketch of the computations for that. Uh, and there is one more thing. Well, we haven't proved yet that dig psi tilde f is greater than zero. Oh, and now I understand, I remember what was this, the issue with BW. Because I, I proved this uh, for that psi tilde is not zero, but uh, mm, this is much easier. Uh, um, but okay, mm, over BW, tick psi tilde f is greater than zero. This is like an exercise, maybe for the classes. And then in local coordinates, well, on bi, it's an easy check. You just write f is equal to minus x1 square minus xh square plus x h plus one square plus x and square plus y1. And then you just, uh, mm, you just compute the, you just compute the gradient. It's so, it's perfectly, uh, perfectly fine to show that this is greater or equal than zero. So f is essentially the Morse function for, um, you can easily show that the psi tilde is a gradient like vector field for f. Comp uh, 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 finishing of the proof. So without this condition, we, we couldn't have, we couldn't state everything because psi tilde could be some, some random vector field which does not control the topology. For example, if psi tilde has closed, connected, closed, broken trajectories, then you just, you just can't, um, can't integrate it and uh, no, no relation between psi tilde uh, to topology uh, of, of X. But thanks to that condition, we have relations. All right, so I have remaining other questions to that part. Uh, 
If not, let me just let me finish the lecture by pointing out some one other thing that I promised to you, but I forgot, but I didn't didn't uh, uh, do because of the break. So there's one thing I promised that I will try to do, but I failed because that's the surf theory and some modern approach to surf theory. Uh, structure of moduli spaces of trajectories. Uh, so what are what is it all about? So we have like this this I will do for classical for Morse Morse honest normal etc. And xi gradient like vector field. Uh, sorry, I, for, for a short break. Uh, xi is a gradient like vector field. And now xy critical points. So what is the mxy? And we assume that xi is uh, more snail. So what is mxi? mxi is the trajectory space of uh, the the space parameterizing trajectories so how do we construct it let me recall x y we choose a level set c bet between x and y we choose a boundary, so we choose stable manifold of x, uh, which was unstable manifold of uh, unstable manifold of x, stable manifold of y. Uh, a is w intersected with f inverse of c. B is w s intersected with uh, inverse of c, and a intersected with b is the space of trajectories. Okay, but uh, of course, if there is, uh, mm, uh, that's what we studied. We studied it mostly in the context of uh, the situation where the index of these two critical points differ, the indices differ by one. So index of y is index of x plus one. Uh, other than that, we didn't study that it that much, uh, but the key question is. So now, for the moment, we assume that there are the indices are arbitrary. What is the compactification of x y? Well, how can we compactify? There are usually in like topology you meet plenty of compactification. So we want to see some sort of a good compactification. Like for example, you have, this is a, this is a manifold. You would like to be the manifold with boundary or with some nice structure. So what is M tilde of X, Y? Uh, well, this is, uh, mm, uh, intersection of A tilde of the closure of A with closure of B, this is like the most natural thing to do. So what is this? What is, what is a point? Uh, well, X is not a good letter because X has been already used, so W. So what happens with, to the trajectory of W? W is a limit. of Wn and Wn, sorry, uh, limit of Wn and Wn in or 
maybe I will be more belongs to A and B. And WN is the pro has the property that uh, has the property that uh, mm, mm, the trajectory from w to WN starts at X and ends up and terminates at Y. So what is the what happens to the trajectory of W? You might remember, might have forgotten, so I recall that a limit of trajectories is a broken trajectory. So there is a broken trajectory of psi through W uh, connecting X and Y. So far, so good. So suppose there is only one critical point Z between X and Y. So what does it tell us? It tell us that tells us that W belongs to M X Z cross M ZY. Okay, so if we have a single trajectory, a single critical point in here, Z, and we have W in the compactification, then there might be not the, the trajectory from W might not start at, a, well, suppose Z is above, might not terminate at Y, but it goes through Z and then from Z to Y. So if W is a limit, then W lies on a broken trajectory connecting X and Y. And broken trajectories of X connecting X and Y are just products of trajectories coming from X to Z and Z to Y. So W belongs to this product. In particular, The, what I say, the boundary of the closure, which is like is contained MXZ cross MZY. All right, that's, that's what we proved. That is, uh, this, that is a consequence of statement that the limit trajectory is a broken trajectory. This is the consequence. Now there is a theorem, gluing theorem. Is actually quality. More precisely, there is there exists delta greater than zero and the map phi from mx uh, z cross mzy to mxy closed and cross zero delta such that mxz cross m, which is an uh, which is an embedding, cross zero, is mapped to the boundary. Cluing theorem informally any broken trajectory can be perturbed to a honest trajectory 
The problem with this theorem is that it has uh, a surprisingly annoyingly complicated proof. So I tried to find uh, uh, some geometric proof for, of that fact, and I couldn't find. This doesn't mean that the, a geometric proof doesn't exist. It just means that it's uh, uh, hard. So what is the picture of that statement? You have x, y, z, and then you can thicken it, and then you can find a trajectory. You can find a limit trajectory. So each trajectory in the each broken trajectory is the limit of honest trajectories. This is the broken. This is the limit, and in many handbooks of on not on more theory, you can find the proof. But the key problem is that people weren't interested in that proof before the dawn of uh, flare theory, which will be the subject of the last five minutes of my of my talk to, on today. Um, and the proofs, uh, the proofs for the Morse theory are like uh, younger brothers of uh, more complex and more difficult proofs in Fleur theory. So in infinite dimensional Morse theory. And if you did uh, a really hard job with, uh, with infinite dimensional Morse theory, you just say, well, the same proof goes through. So you don't bother with finding nice geometric proofs of these facts. I am pretty convinced that there should be a proof of that statement using like just uh, local coordinates and candle decompositions. Pretty, pretty topological by working with that. I couldn't find it easily, but if you want, if you need a paper um, uh, or a master's thesis or uh, or maybe uh, or maybe a, like a part of the of the of the doctor PhD thesis, then maybe it's a good question to ask. Uh, like prove it, prove gluing theorem using local coordinates. And actually the proof is that the proof if uh, is not only difficult, but it also has uh, is less important than the theorem itself. So it's not like many results that were proved before. The statement is that we have a combinatorial, purely combinatorial structure of uh, this leads to a combinatorial structure of the boundary of, of, of the closure of even if there are are more if there are more critical points so you can generalize this statement you can generalize the statement to multiple products and then let me just describe let me describe the this boundary so suppose there are PI, there are X is P naught, mm, P1, PN equal Y, creates of F in F inverse of F of X, F of Y, so between X and Y, with F of PI strictly less than F of PI plus one, then the closure f of x mi has a structure of a manifold with corners, not a manifold with boundary, but manifold with corners. So a manifold with corners is uh, modeled on r k cross zero times R and minus K. Okay, so these are like manifold with boundaries modeled on that, and then you have this, and then you can like have a, an octant in the in R3 and so on, or you can have like a corner 
of this. Of course, from the perspective of differential topology of differential geometry, this is the same structure as manifold with boundary because uh, you can find the homeomorphism between this and uh, half space. But from the point of view of like combinatorics and uh, many different aspects, it's good to single out corners in this. The K dimensional corners are uh, mm, the K dimensional corners are given by by M P zero P I one cross M uh, sorry I should write it more carefully cross M P I one P I two cross uh, the K co dimensional M P I K Pn where we have the ascending the ascending chain and of course this is like a product manifold and it degenerates to something that one of these is split into two pieces where you can insert something in between or if you can't insert there is there is no room for insertion so we will study a cheated example during the classes uh, of uh, f equals sum of 2xi minus uh, sorry 3xi minus 2x uh, 1 to n on 0 1 to n so this is a problem for classes it is cheated because the cube is already the manifold with corners, but it is a very beautiful example for, for understanding what is going on. So we will we will see that in a moment. So examples, but this is like the like the structure of the manifold with corners. Uh, this is not uh, needed in classical Morse theory, so you don't study this type of manifolds in the classical Morse theory. So now let me just say what is uh, uh, what you can do for. Uh, yeah. uh, quick question: Is the term manifold manifold with corners a standard one, or uh, is it uh, some? So it depends on your field. So uh, there are uh, like if you work with convex geometry, there are like zillions on, of different def, uh, definitions of manifolds with corners. But usually if you say manifold with corners, you mean this and uh, this is not as standard as manifold with boundary, but it's not uh, made up for the purpose of this talk. So it's, uh, it's uh, I think it's, the answer is standard unless you work with uh, like, I don't know, permutahedra, and then you have more refined definitions. Okay, is it? Thanks, yeah, I just wanted to ask because uh, if one, sometimes when, uh, when you want to look up uh, in the internet some references then you can't find the name if it's not that certain. Anyway, let, let's go ahead because there's not much time. Okay, all right. So what you can do with more theory, which is not more theory anymore. For example, you can do infinite dimensional more theory, and that's the reason why it's uh, why it's so popular. So, for example, uh, we have like I don't know. Uh, you have a three ma three dimensional manifold M. You consider some bundle on it, vector bundle, and you use some like functional. Like they say, so integral of trace of a and t a plus two over three a a a, where this is uh, where a is uh, a connection. 
on M, whatever that be. So let's ju just to fix some, uh, fix anything. This is called the Chern Simons, Simons functional. And you consider S as a function on infinite dimensional space of connections, whatever that be. So, but it's like a sort of think of it as like space of sections of bundles or space of functions on M and study its critical points. So, okay, so you can study it, study these critical points, but then this is like, uh, and for example, trajectories between critical points correspond to some sort of solutions of now not all ordinary differential equations because this is a differential functional so you have like a differential here of so differential equations on the manifold cross r so we have like manifold m we have a and now we want to study trajectories of A. So trajectories of A's is a choice of A's from here for different values of time. So M T zero, M T one, T one, and so on. And then you build up Morse Smale homology to obtain powerful invariants. So many of the interest in, in renowned, renewed interest in Morse theory arise from the fact that you can do, you can try to do actually infinite dimensional Morse theory and obtain uh, fantastic invariants of three and four dimensional manifolds. Why three and four dimensional? Well, that's because you have uh, like infinitely many uh, differential structures on Rn, uh, on R4, you have uh, plenty of pathological situations on three and four dimensional manifolds, which are related, and now you should understand what, to uh, this a bit more than uh, in the fall, related to the failure of the Whitney trick in dimensions four. So when you prove cancellation of h coborgian theorem, h coborgian theorem fails in dimension four because you can't do the Whitney trick. So there is a space for pathologies and uh, Murphy's law on, uh, in mathematics say that, says that if there is space of, for pathologies, then pathologies occur. So for example, you can have two manifolds which are homeomorphic but not diffeomorphic. You cannot distinguish them by like lo lo looking at CW structure or uh, handle the composition. So you need to have more complex objects. So you study like functionals uh, functionals on this uh, on these manifolds, and now if you have uh, functionals on this uh, mm, different functionals on these manifolds, you can just uh, say, well, okay, uh, we can do more theory, but not on the manifold, but on some infinite dimensional object, and then um, obtain invariants. So this is something that I didn't discuss at all because there are better experts like Piotr Suvara in Warsaw for that. And, uh, but this is like an option if you want to go further in something that is more modern. One of best references is monopoles and four manifolds, a book by Kronheimer uh, I should spell Peter's name. Kronheimer and Mrovka. Uh, so this, uh, so you can go for for that and study it uh, in uh, in many in many aspects. 
Okay, so that's, I think, the most part of uh, uh, this lecture. This is one, our last lecture, so thank you for your attendance. And as for, we, have, we will have classes still in 15 minutes. As for the exam, I told you this will be an oral exam. I would like you to write me an email if you want to pass the exam. Uh, at best before next Wednesday and uh, next two weeks so you can pass the exam basically uh, basically without problems if you want to have more time than two the next two weeks then then also write to me that you need some more time we can we can arrange that uh, but uh, especially if you were really active during classes uh, and pr presented many homeworks or solved many, gave many solutions, then you should do it as quickly as possible, lest you forget. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and that's all our...